Hello friends, Srinivas here. This is third session of our GL DOM validation. So we will continue with our DOM validation today. Uh, so we have completed till question number 20. So now start with question number 21. Okay. So your ledger currency is in USD uh, and uh, the month end you have a balance and account payable liabilities account. 1 lakh euro which is equivalent to UST 1 lakh 536,500 so this balance need to be revalued so during revaluation what happens the month and exchange rate you have to calculate what is the US equivalent so here uh, if you see earlier it was 1 lakh 36,000 550 now the liability has increased okay so now if you revalue it will be 1 lakh 37550 so our liability is increased so it's a loss right so we have a unrealized exchange loss recorded so c is one of the answer and a the original value or original journal entry in euro remains the same yeah so in any case when we are doing the revaluation there are two kind of currency entered currency and accounted currency so entered currency it will be same always but after revaluation it will pick the accounted currency right so when you do the conversion it will take the accounted currency and the differences whatever differences it will go to either loss or gain after uh, revaluation it will book to that unrealized gain or loss account so in this case it's loss recorded okay you can understand right due to the exchange rate variation at the month end the liability is increased so question correct answer is a and c question number 22 okay so your customer uses financial cloud project inventory and hcm and uh, which two statements are true regarding intercompany accounting for the products so <coughs> it's regarding intercompany so answer one of the correct answer would be intercompany balancing rules are used to both cross ledger allocation as well as single ledger journal okay so this is c is one of the correct answer because you can do the intercompany transaction within single ledger or cross ledger okay and uh, if you create balancing rule this balancing rule can be used also in project accounting so intercompany balancing rules are defined centrally and applied across financial and project so c and d correct answer Question number 23. What are two uses of column flattening and row flattening? So, when you are uh, creating any accounting hierarchy, there are certain steps you have to follow to publish. Before publish, you have to do the row flattening, column flattening, and uh, you have to complete the online audit and then active the tree version and then publish. In this case, what is the purpose like? What is the uses of column planning? So, one is optimize parent-child relationship. Okay. And uh, set the state status of the tree to active. So, B and C are correct answer. So, before activation, you have to do this flattening uh, activity. And uh, again, it will help in optimizing the parent-child relationship. B and C the correct answer. You want your sales representatives to be able to find the point of interest such as customers while out on business. What should you enable to achieve this? So answer is D here, geocoding. So geocoding is actually uh, helps in uh, getting the location address in text format. 
So any customer address, if you want to get, you can use the geocoding. So Oracle Fusion has provided this uh, geocoding, okay, uh, in the application. So you can use the geocoding, and uh, you can enable the geocoding option to get such uh, like point of interest. So which two are predefined roles in general ledger? So this is very simple. General accounting manager and general accountant. Okay. Uh, B, C, and D uh, are the correct answer. 20, question number 26. Okay. Uh, you already run translation, but last minute adjusting general and renewal ledger currency was entered and posted after you are consolidated your agent. So sometimes you have completed the consolidation and uh, there are some adjusting entry. You, you need to run that translation process after consolidation. So how, how we can handle that situation? So just uh, rerun the translation and reconsolidate the result. So anytime uh, within a period you can number of times you can multiple times you can run the reconsolidation process there is no harm okay but before that uh, you have to complete all your uh, translation and revaluation etc okay so question answer will be t rerun the translation and reconsolidate to reconsolidate your results so d is the correct answer question number 27 Uh, okay, you have three ledgers use the same chart of accounts with one intercompany payable and intercompany receivable account. So three ledgers you have, but they are using the same chart of account. Okay, the chart of account also have intercompany segment. So each ledger has one legal entity assigned to it. So what you can do, how you can create your intercompany balancing rules. So you can use the primary balancing segment rules. Okay. Because there are three ledgers, right? Uh, and uh, each ledger has specific legal entity and assigned to BSP values. So to capture the balancing rules for uh, each of the ledgers, you can use the primary balancing segment rules. Okay. So correct answer is C. Question number eight, eight twenty-eight. And what are the three consider uh, legal jurisdiction? So legal jurisdiction is nothing but your legal address, right? Legal address component. So state, country, or group of countries. Okay. So basically, it should be state, country, and postal code actually. And uh, the answer will be either E, A, D, and E. Okay. Or you can get it like C, D, E also can be answered. Group of countries, a single country, or state. So any one of the answers should be correct like a uh, d e or uh, c d e a b d is not the correct answer a b identifying zones is not the correct one so either answer will be a c sorry a a d e or c d e question number 29 for journal approval which A makes list builders? So that is BPM approval rules. For journal approval, if you are doing uh, uh, like routing the journals to the account manager, uh, when it subordinate the general account and enter the journal, so it's kind of the correct answer will be A. Question number 30. You need to set up calendar for uh, the year, April to March. Where year is following year, uh, and uh, you would like to period to be named 
according to the year they fall. So they are specifically looking for the format, correct format, calendar format need to use. So in April to May, only one, if it is April to December and then uh, January to March next year, 2024. So in each year, the year name should be uh, according to the year they fall in. So, so obviously it will be calendar years. So A is the correct answer. And uh, because in calendar year, uh, periods to be named according to the year they fall in. If it is fiscal years, then it will be consistently only one year. For example, if it is April to uh, March, April uh, 2023 to March 24, then uh, the fiscal year will be named after uh, 2024 from April to March. But in case of calendar, you can use till December, you can use 2023 and from Jan to March 2024, you can use year as 24. So calendar year. Is the correct answer. B is the incorrect answer. Question number 31. You are planning to create an uh, income statement using smart view. So which smart view tool should be used? So I think query designer is one of the tool you can use for uh, income statement. I think it should be the correct answer D. Okay, so D should be correct. And question number 32. You have a requirement to have invoices generated for certain intercompany transactions. So where do you enable invoicing? Okay, so invoicing usually you enable in the transaction types, right? Okay, so you have a requirement to have invoices generated. That means you have to use the subledger invoicing for AGIS transactions. So a transaction type, you can enable that option. Let me show you. If you go to setup, if you go to setup and uh, general ledger, intercompany transaction type, Okay. If you open it, so you can see uh, intercompany transaction type you can enable invoicing. <coughs> if you enable this invoicing option, then uh, we'll able to create subledger transaction AP and AR invoices, right? So here. Yeah. B is the correct answer. Question number 23, 33. The company is implementing uh, general ledger as business requirement to report under two accounting conventions and is considering setting up primary and secondary ledger. The two accounting standards very close and uh, which data conversion uh, level should you recommend to ensure only manual journal entries will be entered for secondary ledgers. So secondary ledger mainly used to represent the accounting differently. If uh, there is a requirement to represent accounting with some local uh, or statutory requirement, you can create your uh, secondary ledger and create the accounting. So based on the company's requirement, like if you want all the sub ledgers transactions to be accounted at secondary ledgers, you can enable sub ledger level or you can uh, journal level or add balance level also. But here the requirement is that uh, two accounting standards are very close and you just don't need detail level journals to be created for secondary ledgers and only manual journals can be entered for the secondary ledgers. 
So in this case, you can the ideal option will be adjustment only level. Okay. In this case, if you enable the adjustment only level, so you will in secondary ledger you can create the adjustment entries only, right? So no need to like uh, create sub ledger uh, journal or balance level journal in secondary ledgers. In this case, correct answer is adjustment only level. Uh, question number 34. Which two statements are true regarding the translation process? Okay. So translation process can only be used to translate balance data. No, incorrect. If necessary, before submitting the translation process, the revaluation should be completed. Yeah. So that can be a correct option here. Yeah. So B is the correct one. And uh, any resulting upset from the translation is entered in the cumulative transaction adjustment account. Yeah, correct. So in translation, you know, like when you are defining the specify ledger options, you have the option to uh, assign your cumulative transaction or CT account, right? So any upset, a resulting upset, it will be dumped into this uh, translation cumulative translation adjustment account. So answer will be B and C, not B and D. B and D the incorrect answer. So B and C, the correct answer. Question number 35. You have defined intercompany balancing rules at all four levels. Which rules will be considered first? So the primary balancing segments, the, the sequence is the first it will consider the primary balancing segment, then legal entity, then ledger, and then chat up account. So first will be considered this primary balancing segment rule. She is the correct answer. Okay, guys, thank you. Uh, in next session, we'll uh, discuss the rest of the questions. Thank you, guys.